government of Canada destroyed many of the relevant archives. Many of them were lost in the Second World War and other repositories. People were afraid to talk about this. Some of the survivors said to us quite clearly back in the 1980s when we began finding some of them that, you know, they didn't want to talk about it because maybe it would happen again. So it was a, um, an unknown episode, a blank page in Canadian history that beginning in the mid-1980s we slowly began to fill in the page. And of course, the result of all this was that in May of 2008, the government of Canada, the government of Prime Minister Stephen Harper, uh, thanks in large measure to the work of Inky Mark, a member of parliament for Dauphin, Swan River, Marquette, who uh, is himself of Chinese Canadian heritage and was, uh, whose parents paid the head tax, who became interested in redressing historical injustices. Uh, we got in touch with him and Inky Mark uh, crafted Bill C-331, uh, the Ukrainian Canadian Restitution Act is what we used to call it. Uh, and that Bill C-331, although it was later modified, became the basis on which the Government of Canada in May of 2008 offered the Ukrainian Canadian community an endowment fund of $10 million administered by the Ukrainian Canadian Foundation of Taras Shevchenko for the purpose of commemorating what happened during Canada's first national internment operations and educating all Canadians about that experience so that Hopefully, no other Canadian ethnic, religious, or racial minority ever has to suffer again as Ukrainians and other Europeans did in 1914 and 1920. And I think recalling what happened, uh, putting up commemorative plaques, uh, putting material into the educational system, putting material on the internet, uh, reminding people of this unfortunate episode in Canadian history um, should at least help us ensure that what happened then uh, and since doesn't happen again. I'm an optimist. Now, some people say that what we learn from history is that we don't learn anything from history. I'm not that pessimistic. I do think that we can learn. I do think that um, a symposia like the one we've had in Kingston offer an opportunity for scholars and community activists and descendants and, and others to get together and share ideas and work together to ensure uh, that Canada becomes a more inclusive and tolerant place, particularly in times of domestic and international crisis. Speaking frankly, for me, this has been the work of some quarter of a century of my life. I never thought it would take this long to secure recognition from the government of Canada, but it has been secured. Uh, a restitution, a symbolic restitution was made with the $10 million endowment, far less, by the way, than the value of the internees' confiscated wealth or labor would have been if you'd actually calculated it out. It should have been worth $50, $60 million, but we weren't interested in money. This was never about money. It was always about memory. Uh, we got that line from Mary Monka, one of the internees. Mary said, don't go after compensation. I'm not interested in an apology. How can you apologize to me today for what happened 75 years ago? It makes no sense. But what you can do is you can acknowledge that it happened. You can recognize that it happened. And you can try to learn from that. And don't go for compensation for historic injustices. Instead, create a fund that any Canadian can apply to for artistic, cultural, creative, educational work that will recall Canada's first national internment operations. I have no personal connection to the internment operations. No one in my family, no grandfather or anything was interned. I had no stake in this at all. Uh, but I thought that that woman and Mr. Sakaluk and a few of the other internees who I met set the exact right tone as Canadians. They said, this isn't about paying me off or saying I'm sorry and giving me some money and telling me to go away. This is about memory. This is about remembering and making sure that some other ethnic, religious, or racial minority doesn't suffer as mine did once upon a time. So remember, and I was happy to play a small role in, in helping secure exactly that outcome. And, um, you know, I'd hate to think that that's my life's work, but if that's all I accomplish in my life, then it will have been a, uh, you know, a, a mission accomplished that I feel proud of.